Good morning and welcome back. About an hour away from here in West Sussex is a small English village. Everything looks very normal. It's got a nice looking coffee shop. It's got some beautiful old buildings, but there's one thing that sets this village apart. And that is the fact it's got England's oldest classic and vintage motorcycle dealership. This was recommended to me by David and I had to do a double take when I saw this classic motorcycle dealership called Verrills because it looks more like a museum. So today we'll take you with us to this little village, see if we can film inside Verrills and show you some of the selection of motorcycles they've got because if the website's anything to go by, this is a very, very special place. made it. The little village of Handcross. Population 1,400 people. In this tiny little village with a mainish road going through it that's fairly busy, specifically on this side of the village, petrol heads heaven. So, sign of Vowels is just there, you can see, old vintage sign, old style fuel pump there, coffee shop monarchy will be happy. Before I show you that, have a look at this. Royston's Automotive Art, Literature, Collectibles. I'm about to show you a couple of special cars, but past the cars is something even better. Look, so you've got these cars here with all of the details there. So that's a V8 Merc with the F1 pack. 1975 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray here. Do you know the thing about this place? I'm sure it's open, but it looks closed. And I have no idea why. Steve McQueen picks there. McQueen bullet with his Mustang. Does that not seem like a brilliant deal? £24,995 for a car that looks that good. I would say that is phenomenal value with an old Series 1, possibly. Land Rover in the back. Monaco, I can't wait any longer. Look at this. Motor Guzzi. Classic old Honda behind it. And I tell you what, I tell you what, this Motor Guzzi special. This is a 1985 Motor Guzzi SP. That is 7K, but we've got a ridiculously special one behind it. That looks like a Rickman Matisse. I can't make out the wording on it, but that looks like, in essence, I think, if I'm right, Steve McQueen's off-road bike of choice. Someone will tell me if I'm right. Rickman Matisse, I think, at the back. It is Rickman Matisse. Which one? This one right here, the off-roader. Oh. What I want to know, why is this place not open? This isn't even why we came here. Okay. This is literally right next to Verrill's. I would have probably gone in here and wasted their time pretending like I was going to buy it, but Verrill's is two doors down. Coffee shop. The first sign of what's about to come. Old SO fuel pump. Yeah, this is where we're going, yeah. Okay, England's oldest classic motorcycle dealership. I think, from what I've read, this is the third location they've had in their time of being open. And from what I've read again, I think the current owner, in essence, inherited the business from the old owner who had it for 
24 years while he was managing it with this guy. The guy who was working with him ended up taking it over. Well, you have to know about it to come here because it is set back. Hello, are you a classic bike dealership? Yes, we are. Can I have a look around? Of course you can. Brilliant. Could we film in here? Of course you can. So lucky, I just caught Ian in the workshop there. Ian is the current owner of... Verrells. Verrells, Verrells, I'm sorry, I went completely <laughs> blank. Uh, right. Verrells, set back from the road. I've read a little bit about it. Could you just give us a two minute snapshot about Verrells? Uh, yeah, going from the late 60s. Uh, I joined the company 35, 36 years ago as a mechanic. I took over from Brian Verrell. Uh, he died. 15 years ago, I guess, he died a couple of years later. And so it's the oldest established business doing this sort of thing in, in its, the country. Am I right? Third location, used to be South West London. We were in South, uh, yeah, in Tooting Beck yeah. Uh, yeah. for a long time. That's where the shop started. Yeah. Uh, then we moved out to the countryside 25 years ago. In this exact location? Uh, yeah, we were yeah. in the front part. Then we were in the high street in what's now got a couple of bikes in the front. But when Brian died, that building was sold. Uh, we already were using this, so it made sense just to bring everything around here. So I have the showroom around here. You've, uh, you've got, just looking online, such an extensive list of motorbikes, all the way from about 100 years old up until the 1970s, something like that. Yeah. Your clientele, do you cater for people all around the world with yes. such an yeah. eclectic yeah, mix yeah, yeah, of bikes? Yeah. I mean, the internet is most of our business, although we expect people to come and see the bikes in the showroom. And we'd rather they did and kick the tires and sniff them and you know, hear them, because it's much more, it's a purer sale. They're just sending them off to you know, Japan or America, which we do. So Australia, Australia could be yeah, Japan, America. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. could you, if you're happy to, just show me two or three of the most special bikes and a very quick sneak peek into the workshop? Yeah, of course, of course. Let's see the two or three favorite bikes. Oh, okay, favorite bikes. Uh, it's a bit of a mess down, down the bottom because we've been squeezing things in. Uh, what, a, what a place. <laughs> I've never seen anywhere like this. It's Excellent. incredible. No, we like it. And, you know, we're enthusiastic about the bikes. So it's, uh, we figure if you're not, you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. You know, if you're not uh -huh. interested in the bikes. It's, I mean, uh, just Indians, old Nimbus, Kawasaki's, Japanese stuff, everything. I mean, these things are a bit of a novelty for us, the later modern bikes yeah uh, because we've always dealt in this sort of stuff but we know that there's interest in you know the up-and-coming Japanese classic Japanese market so we've got to have a go so things like that the Marini behind you the little bull taco things, yes 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 you know we've yep. always had classic bikes the post-war you know era Vincent's this sort of era but moving into the 70s you know we're gonna to have to do it it's a bit out of our comfort zone do you, do you find that the, the interest in classic bikes is slowly or oh, quickly moving. evolving over to it the is. Kawasaki's as this yeah. generation dies out? The I mean, the interest is still there, especially with the earlier stuff. But you have to look at, you know, guys' sort of bedroom wall poster bike. And there's a lot of guys that wouldn't know what a Tiger 110 was. They certainly know what a KH250 is. They remember it from their youth. They don't go back that bit further. So it's a wave. And it just, it affects the market, uh, affects the prices, but they will still sell. I've just got a loaded a bike in the van, a 60s AJ, that a retired guy is just buying to yeah. get involved. So, you know, the blokes into their 60s, 70s, 80s are still buying. And we hope earlier, you know, younger blokes are getting involved as well. Do you put it in date order, roughly speaking? Not or, really. No, nothing No, at it's all. wherever okay. they get okay. squeezed in. Uh, your favourite two or three? Uh, well, at the moment, and uh, not because it's probably the one of the most expensive, is that. And uh, it's what makes this special? Indian, uh, original, unrestored. Uh, and 1912 12. Indian. I mean, look yeah. at the detail And so that's all there. its original finish, what's left of it. But it's been mechanically entirely rebuilt. So that bike, you just get on and ride it straight away. And it will start oh, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. ride. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the light so. on the front. So, that, I mean, there are a number of. What would big, this sell for? Uh, what's this for sale? This for? is up for 70,000 quid. 70,000 yeah. pounds. And every, yeah. this is not a museum. No. Everything in here is for sale. I mean, it's museum level stuff. You've well, got people here. think it is a museum. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we charge them. No, we don't charge them. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice to. Uh, 
I mean, a favourite of mine yep. is a silly little thing down here. I shouldn't call it that. But, so this is, as far as we can make out, uh, 1898. So when you talk about 100 years old, you know, we're then looking at 125 years old. And why do you say as far as you can make out? Well, because there's very little information about it. It's a Belgian made, it's called the Derby. And, at, you know, at that point, guys were just having a go. It's bespoke frame and engine. So it's a proper motorcycle. It's not just a bicycle with an engine. And guys were going, right, we're going to make our own engines, make our own frames, make a motorcycle. So this is right at the dawn of motorcycling. And uh, so we pieced it all back together and had it running. I've not ridden it. It's, uh, it just fascinates me that you can get something that old that will run and potentially, you know, rebuild the wheels and stuff and rework it all. But then fuel it works. Tank. Yeah. Fuel tank there. Yeah. So it's literally a bicycle Very, that someone has... It, well, essence. it isn't. No, because, you know, they've... The frame yeah. is made to take that energy. It is, okay. So, I mean, there are things where they've just plugged it into a bicycle. You could buy a clip-on engine, yeah. and that's fine. But, and you know, re interesting detail in the design of the engine that makes it that old of that period. Things that they started dropping automatic inlet valves and timing gear inside the crankcase and that sort of thing, which were very primitive. But I just find it really fascinating because they're that old and yeah. they work. You know, yeah. something that old that still works. And there may well not be any of these. I, there, I mean, we think there's one other One other. Uh, in South Africa. The price? Uh, that's 25,000 25, on the, on the, um, on the uh, website. Wow. And would you mind quickly showing me the workshop? No, of course. Do you do, yeah, in, yeah, do, you yeah. do the, the work on the bikes yourself? So any yes, of these, yeah, anything yeah. here you can turn your hand to? Uh, well, we try it. If we can't, then we know guys that can. So we know our limitations. We just get stuck in and do it and find out. Because there's certain things where there's nobody you can ask. You just go. I can imagine. You know, but you research it as best you can. But it's all nuts and bolts. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Until you get into the newer stuff. That's little black boxes scare me. Yeah, you know, yeah I can you just imagine. Think, uh, but we have to find out who can make replacement little black boxes. Yeah, yeah. To the workshop. Yes. I've taken the camera off Monica just in case. It is, <coughs> yeah, it's a bit tight. So Go it'll on. just be me in here. Ian, can you just give me an overview of, of the workshop? What happens on a standard daily basis in somewhere like here? Uh, just bringing bike, stock bikes in to prepare them to go into the showroom, but then other bikes to prepare them to go out once they're sold. So to be road tested. It, and, it's uh, your job to source the bikes, find the bikes, pick up the bikes, of course, agree a price, bring them down on this really steep step here. Into well, here. there's a plank there, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that right. makes more sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. then, but you do everything from sourcing to mechanics, yeah, yeah, yeah. get them in there, yeah, get them ready yeah, to be sold. Yeah. Do you keep enough of the parts behind you? I can see it's just full top to bottom. And the back is as well. Well, you hold parts that you think you're going to need, but you know the people that have got them, if you haven't got them, to go to. So the experience we've got and the database of people means that we can source things that we need and source things for other people as well. So, you know, if we sold, we could sell all the parts we've got, but then we'd be stuffed. You know, when something breaks or something's missing. Uh, so, holding parts, we not we don't sell parts particularly. But if somebody says I, I need something for a early bike, if we've got it, we'll sell it to them. And do you find if someone wants to come in here, they own a vintage bike, a classic bike, would you take on a restoration job, or do you focus? No, we only? don't. We no. don't. Okay. I mean, smaller jobs. You know, an engine, gearbox, potentially, if it's just checking something through and helping them out. Yeah. We'll do that, but we haven't got the space to take. I mean, a mate asked me about a, uh, a 70s Harley, and he said, if I bought it, I'd want you to work on it. I said, well, I can't do it. We've got stock bikes. It's, you know, a bed blocker there means we can't get sold bikes out. And just a final one, Ian. For, for parts for bikes, I've always been fascinated by this. Vintage classic bikes. How difficult is it actually? John. It's my buddy, John. John, Freddy? nice to meet you. How you doing? Yeah. How you doing? Just uh, doing a, no, no, a YouTube no, no. Just thing. Just a, a quick two-minute video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Pleasure yeah. to meet you.
And I'll wrap it up quickly. Um, no, no, how no. difficult is it in reality, Ian, finding sourcing parts for all of these old bikes? So is it just a question of once you know the right people, it's relatively easy? Well, that's where you start. And if you can't find them, you get them made because there's guys out there that can make anything. You know, from India making petrol tanks to Czechoslovakia making engine parts. Any, you know, if it's been made once, it's been made again. Yeah. So if the bike's worthy of spending the money, then you spend the money. Get them made. Yeah. Ian, thank you so much. Oh, you're right. Thank you so yeah. much. Forgotten, some names that you've never heard about. It's a complete encyclopedia of motorcycles in physical form. We've got Scott, never had it, Ariel. Rally, I associate Rally only with bicycles, not motorbikes. Singer, isn't Singer a sewing machine brand? Did Singer make motorcycles? Envy Augusta, great, recognize it. Velocette, Douglas, Triumph. Sparkbrook, Sunbeam, no idea. Zenith, Indian from 1912, Triumph, Norton, Velocet, Sunbeam, Harley Davidson, look at this. Harley Davidson in that colour, looks completely unrestored. Rudge Ulster, what on earth is a Rudge Ulster? Errol, Vincent, Douglas, Excelsior. What a name, Excelsior. Another Douglas in the back, then you've got right next to me here, they're getting the quote-unquote new stuff in. That looks like an early 1970s Kawasaki 250. Unbelievable looking, fully restored Indian there. Greaves, Scottish. I see the Scots make motorbikes as well. And two more incredible Nortons with an AJS, a Nimbus, and we're done. This is the alleyway. This is how convenient it all is. This is the alleyway here, I believe. I think that's the alleyway down yes, to Verrill's. Come down whether you're on a bike or in a car. I can't recommend this place highly enough. You can so easily spend two to three hours here. You can check out some of 
the finest selection of classic motorbikes there. You can go and buy a classic car or motorbike to my left. You can then stop for some great looking food and delicious coffee. In between there is a National Trust place over there. It's, it's a joyous way to spend the day. And to confirm, we didn't contact Ian from Verils and say, look, we're coming down, can we do some filming? I completely put him on the spot there. He didn't have a chance to tidy up or make everywhere look nice and special. What you saw there is exactly what you get. And I think the microphone was playing up for my last bit in there, but that is a motorcycling encyclopedia in there. It's a complete motorcycle history back from the 1890s onwards. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up there, otherwise the video is going to be about 40 minutes or so. But just to confirm, the Honda Trans Alp has been confirmed and it will arrive a few days after my trip to Estonia. So later tonight I'm heading off to Estonia. Straight after that, Trans Alp arrives. So the next video will be the arrival of the Trans Alp. All of the details for Verils written description below. And thanks so much everyone for coming on. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you all in the next one.